It's me, Nim Sony. Welcome back to Project TX. Today we are looking at a somewhat short video. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. Anyways, um, and today's video is about hand poses and a few little uh, itty bitty things that I've done, uh, mostly behind the scenes. So firstly, the hand poses. I actually had a four day weekend this week. Uh, so as such, I did something that I've been meaning to get in properly again for a while which is hands and as you can see here uh, we also have a little bit of an extra bit here which is because this video will actually be uh, a two-parter uh, when i say two-parter it's actually two parts in the same video so no no skipping or anything like that uh, and that's because i will be showing you uh, the editor as well as the actual vr system right now uh, you'll have to ignore any sort of jumping tracking issues because i am using one sensor I'm lazy and I don't want to put the other sensor on the table and move things about. Um, as you can see, I actually am not using the Knuckles controller or anything special like that. This is just the Oculus Touch controller and you can see it's actually quite impressive. Uh, it's actually quite expressive in terms of using those touch sensors because that's the one, one thing that I wanted to do was get the, the use of those touch sensors in. So you can see here, touch on the finger and thumb sensors and then of course the triggers here and there and then using the triggers and using the touch sensors at the same time you can see here makes that little bit of a difference and then you can do that and you can also pinch 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 as well as a full grab and then of course you can do these things like that and then do little do there you go yeah it's pretty cool i really like that um the oculus touch controller has all those useful sensors for for like emotion uh, which is the best bit about it of course it doesn't have a bloody oculus uh, a touch sensor on the one most important for function which is the grip bloody button but uh, hey that's not my problem is it uh, and um, that's that so you'll notice actually that some of the grabs well most of the grabs still use the kind of default hand pose uh, that's because uh, i just haven't got around to doing all of that yet I've added a couple of random objects here and there and of course some of these objects have good poses on them and this one's quite important because the other thing that I've been working on is getting the hand tracking to be improved. Now the main thing you'll notice here, let's just put this on the floor nice and neat, is the actual tracking speed on these red lasers. So if you look at what these lasers actually are, these are the things that are handling the menu and uh, as you can see they are actually based on my actual tracking not on the physics which means that if i'm holding this handle here you can see the red lines come off the actual physics object there but you can see how closely these things are tracked so this is a full physics hand with a physics joint and, and no additional motion is being applied to it externally it's completely based off of a limited physics joint and you can see it tracks the the motion of the object very quickly which is which is something that you've seen before in, the, in on this channel but the rotation is more important here you can see with these lasers that actually the rotation is very very quickly matching the actual tracking here which is what i'm looking at here because when you actually do the twisty thing here that i'm doing on this hand one of the things that is normally a problem with physics systems, and I had this same problem as well, which is what I've been trying to fix, is this sort of softness here. What, what that ends up doing when you've got weights on the other end is you end up, when you're trying to do this, you end up with your hand moving up and down because the weight is over on this side. So you get this weird motion. But as you can see, that's actually not happening here. I can still twist it quickly on, on the one axis where there's no real weight. But on this side, instead of moving my hand up and down, it's simply relaxing and relying on the actual rotation, which is really useful when you're actually trying to aim it somewhere. So you can see here, it's actually much easier to handle, ooh, if it doesn't hit you in the face, the handle where it's going to hit especially even without using your shadow there <laughs> because you can sort of manage the the motion of it and you know 
exactly what it's going to do just because you're based on it's based on sort of things that you've done in reality quite a lot in your life uh, now these guys here a uh, tiny little bit of a problem with them hey come down here you little you get up so there's a bit of a problem with his head as you can see i've been messing with the ragdoll physics a little bit but um uh, that'll be fixed very soon uh, the main thing is in the menus. So what I've done behind the scenes is I've been working on the actual systems, um, so the actual programmatic systems, and I've moved calibration from all these buttons on my on my controller over to the menu, which is really useful. I'm not going to do it right now because I've already calibrated, of course. And uh, then I've got some additional things like teleporting. Here we go. Click. There we go. We can jump straight to the top of the base. I uh, also have the ability to move the actual um, menu, which just sort of matches my head. And then I can just leave it where it is, which is really cool. Um, these are just basic systems. It's just because the behind the scenes setup was uh, improved somewhat to be able to do this, because now that I'm not using the buttons, I can do what I wanted to do in the first place, which is manage the way that I'm using these um, these objects here so back to the spawn point um, which is this is the main object here so as you can see it's still a physics gun uh, that can throw things about including this guy off you go but whew, the cool thing here is that it's actually showing something on this little screen here so you'll notice it's actually showing the mass of something object of the object that you're holding the pos position and the rotation of the object as well so this is just random data that i'm pulling from the object from the thing that it's grabbing and that's really important because this is a bit of an advanced tool now as i wanted it to be in the first place while you're holding this object i just threw something in the background um, while you're actually messing with these objects you can see that if you switch over to the tools menu we actually have some tools now and the cool thing is click you can see that it actually works so now that red gun from the menu is completely obsolete because now we can use this as the remover click or we can switch it very quickly to physics gun and actually use it as a physics gun and of course once i start adding all the other tools in the menu we'll be able to use them in the exact same way really really freaking useful Bang. anyways that's about that uh, all we're going to do right now is do a very quick mess around with these things because somebody wanted to see what it looks like when we do one of two things one with this and one with these so the first thing of course is this thing here because of course in the last video i stood on top of it and of course it was very hard to balance but someone mentioned that if we put the weight underneath and this is something that i tried right after that video um, we'll be able to balance it a little bit better. So let's grab it a little bit forward from the back, from the center, and off we go. Whee! <laughs> oh, well, that was a great start. Great start. Anyways, so that's that. As you can see, it balances a little bit better, but it just depends on how I grab it in the first place. We also have these boosters, uh, which I've now added to the menu. And the good thing with these, which is what I tried after that, and I ended up doing it in the thumbnail of the video, is that since I don't have the um, uh, pull in, the reel in function on these yet, because I only just fixed the actual functionality of the button system from the player, I was using these, and someone wanted to see this as well, uh, as the way of actually swinging properly. So we can shoot, and then boost from behind us. Ooh, <laughs> couldn't get my hand, hand there. It got stuck behind my back. And that actually is not going uh, going to happen in the end. Uh, it's only because I haven't disabled collisions properly because um, I got lazy again. So there we go. And you can see with these boosters, I'm able to actually swing properly and even get on top of the building. Really cool, really fun. And uh, there you could see the tracking issues. Anyways, that is the end of this part of the video. I also added this guy as a physics object, um, even though someone mentioned it was in the game the other in the other video, but it was just a static object. 
for testing materials and I decided hey I might as well add it as a nice physics object for you to play with so there we go we have a tubby box lovely tubby box I love the tubby box there we go uh, this acts as your companion cube wonderful <laughs> off to the editor now for a different part of the video involving that random floating hand bye bye so here we are in the editor now i'm actually still using my oculus mic so because uh, i don't have a mic on my desk right now um, but uh, it should sound pretty good because i've got it quite uh, close to me as well um, now what we're looking at is that floating hand that you saw in the video in the vr uh, world and what this actually is is my temporary hands it's actually more than one i have both of them as you can see here i've got a little uh, custom editor here which allows me to actually set up the hand poses so what i can do is i can switch on each hand individually i can show the left show the right or show both which is the actual object which is what uh, it contains both and if i go through each of these so i can actually switch over and go through each of these i can go through the actual bones themselves and rotate them and modify them so here we have uh, sort of the the index finger here which i can do this i can rotate that i can rotate that and rotate that there we go and uh, yeah so if we switch off the right hand here you can see that my left hand i've created a bit of a, a weird pose here uh, let's just go in like this with these and create some pretty simple-ish uh, sort of pose and i'll show you how my pose editor actually works so here we go just very quickly rotate those in i'm gonna leave it as that and as you can see i create a very very basic and weird pose that's irrelevant the fact of the matter is that i can actually create a pose here so all i did is actually modify some bones on the unity editor now with my custom editor what i've done is something very similar to steam vr in fact i i, I got the idea from the way steam vr handles hand poses uh, when we show both you can see that my right hand hasn't uh, nothing uh, i haven't actually edited my right hand however what i can do here is i've got a flip left to right which creates the same pose now on the right hand side so here you can see the right hand has actually matched the pose from my left hand there you go and now the cool thing here is i can actually press make pose and what that does is it adds another custom pose in my pose library which is just unnamed so it's just pose underscore and then it's unnamed and now if i switch back to defaults so you can see here we've got our defaults i've actually stored a hand pose so now i can actually load the one that i created so there you go if i just show only the left hand you can see here's the default and i click load and here we have the custom one now the cool thing is um uh, this itself it would be quite useless if we couldn't actually you know put the hands onto a grab point which would make it very very difficult to actually rotate the fingers and, and make them look right for any given object so what we'll do here is we'll create one for this the 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 gun over here the physics master so if i go into the physics master and click on the grab point and you can see here i've got a bit of a sphere collider just to actually detect it and what I can do is I click on my temp hands and I drag that grab point into this section here. And what that allows me to do is actually place the hands. So you can see here now with the, with the default, they are placed according to all the grab, po or grab points logic, including its radius of the handle. And it positions the hands there. And now what I can do is of course, create the pose around that. So here, we can now rotate our index finger. In fact, I'll rotate all the others at the same time. There we go. We can rotate our fingers. The pinky finger is a little bit stuck. So we'll just uh, leave it like that for now. Um, yeah, obviously this uh, gun is not perfectly shaped. It's not an ergonomic gun. But that's okay. So there we go. Rotate these in, you know, and create an actual pose out of our fingers. I'm just going to do it very, very quickly here just for the sake of showing how this system works. So there we go, we've got a nice little grabby grab thing. Uh, our thumb's a little bit broken inside there. We'll just shove it up here. Very weird way to hold a gun. But as you can see now, if we show both, 
and we actually flip left to right, we can see that our hand, right hand matches that as well. And then of course, we can create make pose, which of course adds our custom pose there, which I would rename directly after. And now when we get defaults, no matter where our hand poses are, we've got a nice new custom pose that matches that handle. So all I have to do now is jump into that handle, which is over here, grab point and add the poses that I want specifically for that grab point. And that's how I can create custom grab animations and like grab hands for each object. Now these, uh, these little guns here, I've actually created one. So this is very useful. I can quickly show you how it looks with, with those guns. So if I drag the grab point in and place the hands, you can see that they're placed here using the wrong grab animation, of course. Get defaults and we can just grab the pose that we have for those. I believe this should work. There we go. You can see we already have a properly matching pose that fits that gun and it matches on my tiny uh, where's, where's he gone? On my tiny's hands, it actually matches the pose to this temporary pose hand, which is really useful. So there you go. That's my custom pose animator and pose creator. I can just click make pose and, and uh, create a new pose out of any, any object in the scene. I just have to throw the hand onto it and uh, nicely design a pose using the actual Unity editor. It's much better than using animations and having this created custom rather than using SteamVR's own version uh, allows me to actually use all the extra information from my grab point system and of course my grab add-ons and all of the cool things from the prop system that I'm writing and uh, al along with my player systems as well. And there you go, that's my custom hand pose system. That's, uh, that's the end of this video, thanks very much for watching. If there's any questions you have about how I do this stuff, uh, go ahead and ask. I can't give you all of the information, of course, but uh, any li little bits and bats, I can always help you out. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.